Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and I'm glad you're listening today. Diana writes, I eat quinoa all the time, but now I'm learning that the saponins in quinoa could cause intestinal damage and an inflammatory immune response. I would love your thoughts on this. You know, Diana, if you look hard enough, you can find some sort of sinister side to every so-called superfood. And I guess it was really only a matter of time before quinoa got its comeuppance. And sure enough, if you do a quick Google search, you'll find all kinds of scary warnings about the saponins in quinoa. Some people claim that these saponins are toxic and that they irritate the intestinal lining, causing inflammation and all kinds of other trouble. But is there evidence to support these claims? Our show is sponsored this week by Kiwi Crate, award-winning educational products and activities designed to spark your child's curiosity and creativity. My sister Cheryl has young kids, and I recently sent two Kiwi Crates for my nieces and nephews to try. And here's what Cheryl had to say. She said the crafts are extremely well done. The kids had a blast with them. And she said, I'd totally consider buying more of their products. They're really high quality materials, like real wood glue and fresh paint instead of the half dried up containers that lots of craft kits contain. My niece Kyra built a clock that is now hanging in her room. You could try Kiwi Crate with your kids or your nieces and nephews, and you can try it for free. Just go to kiwicrate.com slash diva and you'll get your first kit free today. Just pay $4.95 for shipping. That's kiwicrate.com slash diva. And now let's get back to this week's topic. What are saponins? Saponins are bitter compounds that are naturally present in quinoa, along with lots of other foods, including a wide variety of legumes, vegetables, and herbs. They get their name because they lather up in water, forming soap suds. In fact, the herb soapwort is one of the most concentrated sources of saponins, and it can even be used to make a natural cleanser. Like lots of other phytocompounds, saponins are produced by plants as a method of natural pest control. The bitter taste of these compounds makes plants less palatable to birds, insects, and even humans. Although ingesting large amounts of these bitter phytocompounds could cause some stomach irritation or other unpleasant effects, they're generally harmless in small amounts. Even better, these chemicals often have health benefits. In fact, many of the phytocompounds that are thought to be most beneficial to human health fall into this category of natural pesticides. Saponins from quinoa and other plants have been found to have a number of beneficial properties, such as binding to cholesterol, which can reduce your cholesterol levels, or neutralizing free radicals, reducing inflammation, and inhibiting the growth of cancer cells. There's even talk about quinoa as a potential weight loss aid. And before I give you the details on that, I also wanted to thank Audible for their longstanding support of the Nutrition Diva podcast. If you've got a summer road trip coming up, this would be the perfect time to discover the wonderful world of audiobooks. Audible.com has over a quarter of a million titles from all the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazines. You're sure to find what you're looking for. And unlike a streaming service, you own your books, so you can access them anytime, anywhere. They've also got the Great Listen Guarantee. If you don't like the book you chose, you can exchange it for another title, no questions asked. There are some fantastic summer reads, or rather listens, waiting for you right now at Audible, such as the entire Harry Potter series. And just for you, Audible is offering a free 30-day trial membership. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash diva and start your free trial today. Again, that's audiblepodcast.com slash diva. And now back to quinoa and weight loss. A series of studies done on rats, chickens, and piglets found that diets that were high in quinoa saponins seemed to keep animals from gaining as much weight as they otherwise would. Part of this may have been because the bitter taste of the saponins reduced the amount of food that the animals ate. Something in the quinoa also seemed to increase the secretion of gut hormones that signal satiety or fullness. And it's also possible that saponins could suppress growth in animals by interfering with intestinal function or nutrient absorption. However, all of these studies were done using very high concentrations of saponins. I think the potential for quinoa to promote weight loss or intestinal damage in humans 
is limited because the amount of saponins that we're exposed to is really relatively small. Saponins are most concentrated in the leaves of the quinoa plant, which we don't generally eat, and they're also found on the surface of the grains, but they're readily removed by rinsing the grains before you cook them. And today, a lot of brands are pre-washed to save you this step, and much of the quinoa that's for sale today has been bred to be lower in saponins to begin with because that gives the grain a sweeter, mellower taste, and it also saves you the trouble of pre-washing it. Saponins don't seem to be any further reduced by cooking. But could saponins actually damage your intestines? The amount of saponins that you'd get by eating quinoa is generally much too small to cause any problems. However, if you have some sort of other intestinal issues going on, such as irritable bowel syndrome, and your intestines are already inflamed or irritated, it is theoretically possible that even a very small amount of saponins could further irritate it. But if you're generally healthy and eating quinoa doesn't cause you any noticeable symptoms, I don't think you need to worry that your quinoa is secretly poisoning you. It is, however, just one more reminder of the value of eating a varied diet rather than eating the same few superfoods every day. Eating a variety of fresh foods helps ensure that you're getting a broad spectrum of nutrients and phytocompounds, but it's also an easy way to avoid overexposure to any potential hazards. So Diane, if you're eating quinoa several times a week, why not mix things up a bit? Try some other grains like millet, sorghum, farro, or black rice. There are so many fun and interesting whole grains to try, each with unique nutritional highlights. I started a Pinterest board where I've been pinning some of my favorite grain-based salad recipes, and I'll include a link to that in the transcript for today's show. And if you have other recipes that you like, send me the links and I'll pin them there as well. You'll find the transcript and that link, along with links to the research that I reviewed today, at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com. And you can post your comments or your questions there or on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. I always love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. And remember to eat something good for me.